My name is Nehemiah Abelis. I invite you to journey with me through the Holy Land and meet some of the fascinating men and women whose lives have been transformed by the seven universal laws. Also known as the seven laws of Noah, the seven universal laws are your keys to success in this world and the next. These are the waters of the Jordan River, the place where people have come for healing since the beginning of time. Let us now begin our journey into the spiritually healing waters of the seven universal laws. We are standing before the Cave of the Patriarchs in the holy city of Hebron. It is here that Adam and Eve are believed to be buried. When God created Adam and Eve, the first thing he did was teach them the seven universal laws. After they sinned, the seven laws served as a means of one day being able to return to paradise. Wendell Jones is a world-renowned biblical archaeologist and proponent of the seven universal laws. He is the person upon whom the Steven Spielberg character, Indiana Jones, is based. B'nai Noach is not a religion. It's a covenant that God made with Noah and gave seven laws for social, social justice and human behavior. Those laws are against blasphemy, idolatry, theft, murder, illicit sex, to establish courts of justice and not eating the limb of a li living animal. So you have the whole gamut, and those are the headlines. There's a lot of uh, body stock. Adam Penrod is originally from Texas and now lives in an Israeli community in the Judean desert and is a follower of the seven universal laws. One of the most fascinating things about Judaism was that it works on a two-track system. You don't have to be Jewish to have your relationship with God. You can be a Gentile and still have a very meaningful and profound relationship with Hashem. The way I came to the Sheva Mitzvah was that I studied the Tanakh and I came to understand very clearly that within the Tanakh there seemed to be a path for Jews and there seemed to be a path for non-Jews. I mean the largest book in the Bible, uh, uh, Job, is about a non-Jew. Rabbi Ephraim Sprecher teaches the seven universal laws at the Diaspora Yeshiva in Jerusalem's Mount Zion. Judaism is not the oldest religion of the world. The Adam and Eve were not Jewish and Noah was not Jewish. In fact, there's only one person in the Chumash who's called a tzaddik, and he's not even Jewish. Noah is tzaddik, and he wasn't a Jew. So you don't have to become Jewish to be a righteous person. You just have to find out what God wants from you. Moshe Kempinski runs seminars out of his Shorashim Institute in the old city of Jerusalem. In his store that doubles as an information and outreach center, he has taught thousands of people from all over the world the seven universal laws. People in this world are seeking a relationship with God even though they sometimes don't know how to define it. And what they really are missing is that framework to say, you know, this is a framework that I can begin this relationship. In the year 1312 BCE, God appeared to the entire Jewish people at Mount Sinai and restated the seven universal laws for all of mankind to obey. The first of the seven universal laws is unity. We are standing by the ruins of Ashkelon, the ancient capital of the Philistines, and the center for idol worship. It was here that the conquering pagans, Greeks, Romans, Persians, would sacrifice the idols in the hope of obtaining everything they wanted, success in war, rain for their crops, fertility, and wealth. This practice continues unaltered to this present day, where in many parts of India, 
Africa and the Far East, followers of Buddhism and Hinduism and tribal religions routinely worship and serve idols as part of their religious practice. Today, even those who do not think of themselves as idol worshippers can still serve idols and not even know it. Rabbi Meir Sachs is a popular and renowned teacher of Torah and Hasidus in Jerusalem. Man was created not only in the image of God, but as the Torah tells us, by the hands of God. He's the work of God's hands. There was a direct connection between man and God. When a person is seeking his excitement, his life, his exuberance from other things in the world other than God, that causes a detachment. He now is, as it were, worshipping idols. Rabbi Yirmiyo Bainman is an internationally acclaimed expert on the seven universal laws and is the author of The Seven Colors of the Rainbow, a landmark book on the seven universal laws. If the Creator had not reserved to Himself all the concepts of worship and understanding that He had placed in His world, there would be no harm resulting from people worshipping things other than Him, just like they choose what to eat or choose their own personal friends. But His unity required that uh, he direct all worship to himself in order that people should come to an understanding of him and not to, to an understanding of things separate from him. Irina Piccinini is a philosophy student at Jerusalem's Hebrew University and she is a follower of the seven universal laws. My rationality was unable to understand how one can be three and how three can be one. So at one point I said, okay, one is one, uh, one is one, so this one God, <laughs> the only God is Jewish God. So many people are coming to this because they said, well, all my life I've been bothered about dividing the oneness of God in, in a trinity and so forth, or in, in the deity, and it's so liberating to know that I, I don't have to be a part of that system, but they know it gives an opportunity for a person to be something other than a Christian Jew or Muslim. I don't belong to anything. I'm completely free. Religion interferes with my faith. There is only one God. If you put your faith in people, your possessions, your money, you're in for a sore disappointment. Because in the end, money will not help you, neither will the people on whom you have pegged your hopes and dreams. Not one of your heroes or heroines can rescue you. The only one that can save you is God. Call on him and he will answer you. Trust in no one, in nothing else. The principle of unity. The principle of unity demands worship of God alone. Prohibitions include not to make or serve idolatrous images, not to cause others to worship idols, not to engage in black magic, or devil worship. Benefits include freedom from falsehood and deception, spiritual strength to overcome compulsions and addictions, saving from disappointment, being let down, having your hopes dashed to the ground, 